Hi everybody, thank you for pressing play on the video today. It's Caroline here from craftycarolinecreates.com. Very excited to show you this little box. I just love it. Um, I made this a couple of weeks ago actually and it's taken me a few um, a few weeks to get around to filming it but hopefully it was worth the wait. I just think it is really beautiful little box. Let me show you how it works. This baker's twine, is not baker's twine, it's linen thread in, and this sentiment and flower is just a belly band so we can just slide that off oh there we go slide that off and then it's got a really fun sort of circle opening and then it is also lined inside in the same dsp as i have used on the bottom i just think it is a really really pretty pretty box um, and i love that closing which is a little bit um a little bit unusual just closes up oh, let me show you it just closes up like that you don't even need the belly band actually it stays quite closed quite nicely itself but I just think that it's a little bit extra and I love that I really really love it and it is really easy to make I know I always say this but I don't like complicated projects so I try not to make complicated projects and this one is not difficult at all so put the belly band back on beautiful this is the um, Simply Eclectic Designer Series paper which is a gorgeous pack it's probably my favorite DSP that I've played with so far I don't think the catalogue does it justice so it's got this one which has got little sort of watercolour blobs for word of a better word thought I'd use a different one um, for today's project so I have some pieces of another pattern which is beautiful this is fresh fig and lemon line twist very very pretty so you need two pieces one measures five by five that's this one and this one measures um, just a little bit smaller so four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths and we can do some scoring so let me grab the scoreboard here we go let's just lift you up a tad oh, it's a very bright day here so i'm not sure what's going to happen with the lighting but we will um, we'll go with it so we are going to score both of these squares exactly the same we're going to score them at one inch on four sides so i'm doing the smaller piece first and i'm scoring this with the pattern up because we are going to fold these in slightly different ways so that one is scored that's the smaller bit then the five by five bit score this with the pattern that you want so this is the pattern that we're going to see score that with that facing up and then the five by five bit score this with the pattern facing down if you forget this it doesn't really matter because um it'll still work it just makes it a tad easier in my opinion okay and um, all the dimensions as always are over on craftycarolinecreates.com the other thing that we're going to need is we are going to need four circles I cut these out using my big shot and I used the um, layering circles dies here they are the layering circle framelit and I used the largest of the plain circle dies and that will give you a three inch circle so the diameter of this is three inches and you need two in each of the colors then what we're going to do is push this up to the top corner oh don't knock the camera over sorry about that go I know you love it when that happens you like laughing at me and my misfortune don't you <laughs> okay so oh are you gonna stay I'm gonna stay still I think so we're gonna score this at one and a half inches oh now just make sure you hold it tight when you score it so it doesn't twist like it did there one and a half inches so you're effectively scoring it in half and then also we're gonna score it at two and a quarter inches we're going to put two score lines along each of our circles so one at one and a half inch and one at two and a quarter one and a half inches two and a quarter okay. and the last one I love, ooh, I love this color it's um so bright one and a half and two and a quarter this lemon line twist and fresh fruit did i see that Okay, that is a scoring done. So let us for now put the scoreboard away. Grab your bone folder and we're going to start by folding these in half just along the centre fold line and make sure you give that a really good press. Make that quite a sharp crease. Quite important that you make this crease as sharp as you can. 
And then all we're going to do is along the second score line we made is we're just going to cut along there. There we go. So we get something like that. Just cut that off. Okay. You're not going to see this cut line, so it doesn't matter if it's not 100% perfect. Okay, right. It goes to one side for a moment. The a little bit, the little scraps you can throw away, or you can think of something to do with these. And then we're just going to fold and burnish our two. Um, yep. So the larger one, going to fold up like this, so that the pattern I want is going to be facing down as I'm folding it up. Okay, can you see that? And then the other one, and the way we did the score lines will help you to do this. And the other one we're going to fold the other way. So you want to fold and burnish with the pattern that you want facing up. Okay. Let's make the base up first. And all I'm going to do is very simply cut up those score lines. So making two little flaps on one side and two little flaps on the other side. Okay, let's notch those out. You've seen me do this lots. Okay, now we're going to mix this up. Oh. So what we're going to do is, this is going to be the inside, when we open our box, this is what we are going to see. So what we want to do is we want to build it up so it is seamless. So rather than putting the glue on this side and sticking it up like that, we want to put the glue on this bit and then put it on the outside of the box. So that when you look down, you don't get, you just get a neat corner, you don't get this, you don't see this flap. So, put the fuse on the corners like this. So it's quite the opposite that we're putting fuse on the pattern bit and then we're just going to fold that up and fold these up into each corner. Okay, super, super quick. Now with this bit we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to cut up the score line on each corner. can't see the score line very well on that side. There we go. And then we're just going to notch out, notch out again, just like we did. Okay. And then before we fold this up, we need to do something else. We need to take these, um, these circles that we made and we're going to put some fuse along the flap that we've made so the bit where we trimmed off fuse along there okay and then this is going to stick so that the score line here lines up at the edge of your paper here and we're going to stick it to the pattern bit that we don't want to see okay so I find it easiest just to, and it's going to go right in the middle between your score lines. There we go. So just line it up and press that down. Okay, can you see how that, that crease is lining up with the edge? Then we're going to put the other lemon lime twist bit on the opposite corner now. Okay, so again, just press that down, line it up along the edge of your paper. And there we go. And again, you can see it lines up flush like that. And then the fresh fig bits are going to go on the opposite side. And all of these flaps are going to be hidden by that liner, so don't worry too much at this point about those. There we go. And our last one goes on here. 
on this side. A bit there, press it down. There we go. Okay, so this is what it looks like at the moment. And now what we need to do is fold up a box. So we're going to put fuse on the underside of these four tabs. So we are folding them over, the opposite to what we did on the base. And this is how we'd normally build up a box. Okay. One up. Two. Three. And, oh, I was off camera, sorry. There we go. So what I did was press those up. There we go. So you can see our boxes now come together very nicely. We can just push that down and you can see how it folds. Look at that DSP. It's beautiful, isn't it? I love this combination, actually. Okay, and then you can see inside it doesn't look all that neat, does it? Yeah, we get to see the other DSP, but we've got all these flats going on. So, because it is DSP, just to give it a little bit more strength, I have a little square of scrap cardstock that measures two and three quarters, and I'm just going to stick that in the bottom. A little bit of Tombow to help that stay in the centre, and that'll just give you a little bit more um, strength to your box. And then our little box here that we made, I'm going to again put a little bit of Tombow on the edges and the sides. Okay. And then this should drop perfectly. Oh, it does. Look at that. Oh, just be careful you don't get tomboy everywhere. That will drop perfectly inside and hide all of that tabs and everything and just leave us with a beautiful box. Okay. So we can close that up. So we're just flapping them, flapping them, popping them under each other. And as I said, that does stay quite neatly closed on its own. So you could just lose it like that. I want to do a little bit of stamping to decorate it. So I need a bit of Whisper White card stuck. Here we go. And we're going to use the stamp set that matches this paper that has a lovely watercolour look to give us this, this flower and leaf. And that is called Also Eclectic. Let me show you it. Here it is. And beautiful flower images. These are two-step stamps if you want them to be. I haven't in this case. I've just used this lovely watercolour circle and then the, the matching leaf. So I have mounted these up ready. We've got some lemon lime twist. We're going to do a lemon lime twist flower and then a purple leaf just because if we did it the other way around we won't be able to see our sentiment. So I'm just going to stamp that down. You see how beautiful that is, that lovely watercolory. Um, wash effect and then fresh fig for my leaf and this is a really beautiful leaf I love this a lot there we go and then we can cut these out because stamping up being stamping up have given us some matching thinlets these are called the electric eclectic layers of flint thinlets and let me just show you these as well as having thinlets to cut these shapes out there's also some beautiful, um, this is gorgeous, this is a lovely like sort of fretwork pattern. There's a diamond, um, there's some other little fancy leaves, some little sort of, I can't think of the word, but pretty little, pretty little flowers, as well as the framelits to cut out our, um, our stamped images. Um, yeah, those are really good. And of course, you can get the stamp set and the dies with 10% off if you buy them in a bundle. Save time, you don't need to watch me cutting those out, you've seen me die cut enough. I've already die cut them out so you can see perfectly out. And then we're just going to stamp the sentiment. These are really nice little sentiments here. Um, I'm going to go for, um, what have I gone for? You're just lovely, you're just lovely. I'm going to do it in fresh fig over our green flower. Tap, tap, tap. Well, which way do we want our flower to go? That way. So I'm just going to stamp that in the centre. There we go. Nice. Okay. Now just a little bit of belly banding. I hope I have enough linen thread. This is the last 
of my linen thread. Um, I'm going to start with a um, glue dot. I'm just going to cut out a little square of whisper wipe. You could do a this with a little circle punch as well if you wanted. A little bit of that on there. And then I'm just going to hold that in the centre of my box and wrap my linen thread all the way around. That it worked out perfectly. That is the last of my linen thread though. I will need to buy some more. But I think that's about the right amount, isn't it? So how many times have I gone around there? Four times. So I've looped that round four times. And then I'm just going to come in over the top with my flower. I'm going to attach my leaf first. Something like that. There we go. And then my flower itself, I'm going to put lots of glue dots on the back. We'll just fit, fit on top like that. Maybe the leaf needs to go up more of a, an angle, but I can adjust that. But there we go. Two of what I think are really beautiful, really fun gift boxes with a really interesting opening. Okay, I will say goodbye now. If you um, want to buy anything from Stamping Up, it'll be my pleasure to help. You can do that 24-7 at craftycarolinecrates.com or give me, drop me a line and I will help you place that order. But there we go, two lovely boxes and I will hopefully see you again soon. Bye-bye.